We are family, right? We are family, and uh, we want to continue to be family. We're not a perfect family, just like your family is not perfect, but we're family, and uh, we want to learn how to be family together. Be patient with each other, grow with each other, encourage each other, pray for each other, lift each other up. That's family. We, uh, I think it's awesome when we can do that. Well, um, I'm going to pray, and then... I'm going to do something I've never done before, and that is I'm going to go through some of the testimonies, and I want to just, from heart to heart, pick on some things that I pray it will be very helpful to you, because sometimes I don't get the opportunity to always tackle different issues. And these testimonies brought out a lot of things of how God works and can work in our life when we are open to him. So let me pray. Would you pray with me again? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are awesome. You are holy. You are worthy. You are the Lamb who was slain. You are the resurrected King of kings and Lord of lords. We lift our heart in worship and praise to you. We are a family under your kingship, under your fatherhood. It's because of you. You've made us family. You bought us with the precious blood. Oh, we love you. We worship you. We're broken people. We're sinful people. Uh, We are weak people, but you've made us your children. You've healed us, and you are healing us, and you are strengthening us, and you are faithful to us. We can't say enough, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. And I I know that you are thrilled, and like Alexi said, Father, that, you know, heaven was uh, saying, this is my beloved daughter, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased Because they have accepted my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. They have turned to him and followed him as their savior. And so I thank you, Dad. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. And now, Father, as I share some things, fill me with your spirit, please. And and, uh, bring out what you want to bring out in Jesus' name. Amen. And worship team, after 30 minutes, please just come up. Don't give me any grace. Just come up, and that way I know I need to finish up. So the first testimony is the testimony of Jessica. And she says, uh, what, made, uh, what made the biggest difference was when I experienced some inner trouble around the age of 18. And there are some of you 18, 19, 17, 16. You're going to experience different challenges, different troubles. Uh, just be aware of that. That is the normal, normally the normal stuff that goes on at that age and before. Uh, she says, when I started university and going about my studies uh, and evolving as a person, I suddenly had all these questions about life that I wanted to be answered. Now, some of you have questions that you feel needs to be answered. Don't let the world answer it for you. Don't wait for some movie star to answer it for you. The answer is in the word of God. The answer is in the people of God. The answer in the leaders that God has put for you. Ask those questions. Seek answers to your questions. But not in the wrong place, but in the right place. And so... Uh, I want to encourage you, whatever questions you may have, no matter how difficult or challenging, ask them of us. Ask them of the word of God. So I I started questioning a lot of things, questioning a lot of things, um, and uh, doubting a lot of things. If you're doubting, that's okay. Please understand, it's okay to doubt, but not to live in doubt, right? Having a lot of philosophical questions that used to what? Consume me. Whatever is consuming you, don't let it consume you. Ask, seek, knock, Jesus said. Due to all those triggers and those things and other stresses, such as worrying about the course of my college journey, 
Many people are worried about what they're going to do, how they're going to finish college. Will they finish college? What are they going to work? Feelings of insecurity. Who doesn't feel insecure at different stages, right? I started getting panic attacks and anxiety. Friends, we're living in a time where a lot of people, older, younger, middle-aged, are feeling anxiety, uh, panic attacks. Don't feel you're by yourself. Don't feel you're on your own. It's just you. I want to tell you some of the strongest people sometimes go through it. And so don't hide and don't isolate yourself and don't feel that you something is wrong with you, only you. But you are going through some things that need addressing, that need to be brought to the light. Don't hide them. Come, seek counsel, seek prayer, seek what God would have you do. And you will find that your anxiety, your depression, your panic attacks, God has a solution to them. So please, if that's you, please come and see me. Uh, come and see us and we'd be very happy to work through that with you. I tried different counseling methods, but they weren't really targeting what, I was, what was truly bothering me or missing in my life. I like that. Someone who's been doing counseling, my wife and I, biblical counseling for a long, long time. And got so many books on counseling. And uh, listened to a lot of counseling. And gone to a lot of conferences and did some studies on counseling. There is a place for them. But they, many times, unless they are done biblically and done in the spirit of Christ, they can touch the surface area. They can help you in a certain level, but they don't go deep enough, as you were feeling, to really tackle the spiritual issue and the deep deepness that only the Spirit of God can go in and heal and make you whole. And so I want to encourage you, on top of getting counseling, sometimes you go to the wrong counselor, they mess you up. So be very careful who you go to. Make sure it's a recommended counselor, and specifically if they can be a recommended Christian counselor, because unless God is in the equation, they will give you wrong advice, and they will tell you things that will shock you sometimes, uh, and they can damage you. And so just, and there are other who are not Christian, they're wonderful counselors, so please don't get me wrong, but we have to be very careful and very wise about counseling, because God in Christ Jesus is the ultimate counselor. Believe you me. He is the greatest counselor, the deepest counselor, the only counselor who knows where to put his finger and heal our sin, sick soul, our heart, troubled heart, our panic attacks. It doesn't mean we don't go to professionals, but we need wisdom of how to do it all together with the guidance and counsel of godly leaders. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, so there was still something missing in her life. So her mother says, my mother one day said, Jesse, maybe you should take a uh, talk to a pastor. Uh, maybe uh, he can answer all your questions. I immediately agreed, she says, uh, since I knew that this was the right re- resort. And so I started to email pastors under, uh, to understand more, ask questions, and seek answers. Once again, I started to open uh, once, once things started to open up again, I started attending church. I think it's good to seek a pastor, to seek counselors, Christian counselors, uh, to ask, uh, to attend church, uh, when you, uh, this is so important in our journey. We can't do it on our own. God made us for community. God not only wants us to become followers of His, but He gives us a family to belong to, not just to believe, but to belong to. We cannot do it. By going once a month. We need to do our best to regularly belong with our family. Go to a Bible study. Belong, friends. Belong. I can encourage you enough. You need to belong. And when you belong, there is a protection. There is something that God does in encouraging you, in healing you, in strengthening you, in building you up. But the enemy loves it when he isolates you, when he gets you busy, even in good things with friends, with people, with outings, with things. They're good, but be careful. Don't do them at the expense of meeting together. Like Paul the Apostle said, please do not forsake meeting together. 
Do not, he says. Why? Because it's dangerous. The enemy waits to get you on your own and he starts feeding you rubbish. And he starts speaking lies. And we begin to believe those lies. And he begins to take us more and more. Oh, I don't feel like going today. Or oh, my head is, you know, my head is going. Or oh, my back is aching. Oh, I'll go next week. And, you know, and at the end of the month, you haven't gone. And what happens is your spiritual life goes down, down. You get dry. You, your taste and your desire for God and for the things of the word of God and for prayer just goes down and down. And you begin to get more and more anxious, more fearful, or more sinful. And so I encourage you to, to be careful of those things. I used to carry feelings of guilt, uneasiness, unworthiness. All I wanted was to be able to forgive myself until someone asked me, does it really matter if we forgive ourselves? Uh, I believe all of us carry guilt. I believe all we have uneasiness, uh, unworthiness. We all have these things, friends. And we need to be honest about them. You know, whatever they are. But let me tell you, no one is going to take your guilt except Christ. No one is going to make you feel at peace except Christ. And no one is going to make you worthy except the Lord. And so our worth comes not from uh, people's value of us and opinions of us. Our value comes from what the Lord sees us and thinks of us. You are a child of God when you are in him. And your worth is in him, not in your job. Please be careful. Don't make your job the thing that gives you worth. It will make you one day feel worthless. It will take you up and down. It's not being a mother that makes you worth, that makes you have worth, or father. It's not being a pastor that makes me have worth. It's belonging to Christ. My heavenly father loves me, accepts me. My worth is in him. Anything else is sinking sand. Amen? Yeah. I was advised to come to Jesus and ask for his forgiveness and help. I accepted that he is the only one who can cleanse me from my sin. Not me, not anyone else. I understood that we are all sinners and will always be tainted by sin. We are all tainted by sin and true. The advice, the command is to come to Jesus, ask his forgiveness. He's the only one who can cleanse you from your sins, from your past. And uh, don't delay. Knowing that no matter what the sin was, Jesus will forgive me. If I truly repent, he will remove this taint. And it's so true. He removes what no one can remove. I prayed and surrendered my heart to Jesus. From then on, I was set free. I felt at peace and comforted. I prayed and surrendered. Friends, this is it. Praying, talking to God, and surrendering. Let me tell you, I I use that example sometimes. A a powerful horse, a beautiful horse, a, a strong horse can look so wonderful and beautiful. But if you cannot... Ride that horse. If you cannot control that horse, it's just a wild horse that looks good and strong. But it is of no benefit to a person who needs it to ride on or to carry things on. And God loves it when we are surrendered to him. God can only work in a surrendered person. My life, unless it is surrendered, and not just It's many areas of my life. The area I surrender is the area he is glorified and honored and able to use and able to heal and able to change. My unsurrendered areas of my life are the areas that Satan has control. My sin has control. My flesh has control. And it is an unproductive, dangerous area. God wants us to surrender. Surrender our will. Surrender our way. Surrender our fear, surrender our worry, surrender our anxiety. Whatever needs to be surrendered, encourage you. Surrender and you will find God coming in and working in that area. 
He loves a surrendered daughter, a surrendered son. And tell you what, not only will he help you in those areas, but I promise you, your life will never be the same when you surrender to Jesus. He will take your broken life, not only heal it, restore it, make it whole, but he will use you to be healing to others, to be deliverance to others, to be life to others. Friends, it's not just about us. Yes, God wants to do it in us first. But he's also going to take our life and make it what? A wonderful, wonderful message of his love and his joy and his salvation. God wants to use you, use me. And so guess what? Your life is not over. Just because you're going through a hard time. Just because you don't feel good enough. Just because whatever, whatever, whatever. Guess what? That's not your life. Satan would love to take a picture of you right now, where you are in your depressed state or anxious state or worried state or fearful state. Guess what? Say to you, that's your life. And that's going to be you all your life. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Our God is the God of restoration. Our God is the God of resurrection. Truly, 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 truly. But be surrendered. Surrender your fears. Surrender your doubts. Surrender your worries. I was set free and I felt peace. I think there is a freedom that comes when we surrender. There is a peace. It's just like two nations when they fight in each other and then one of them puts the white flag. There is only peace when that white flag goes up. I surrender. Surrender, friends. Surrender whatever it is today. I started to get to know the word and understand it deeply. I began to attend Bible studies having one-on-one talks and Q&As with brothers and sisters from the church, researching about certain topics. Wonderful stuff, all good stuff, friends. Need to be doing that. Know the Word and let the Word know you. Understand it. Attend a Bible study. Attend a church. Have one-on-one talks. Ask questions. Research. And then hearing online sermons and more. Okay. Hearing online sermons is wonderful, right? It's a blessing. But can I just tell you something about it? I want to encourage you that ask about the type of people you're listening to. There's a lot of good stuff out there, but there's a lot of bad stuff out there. There's a lot of good stuff with some inside few ideas or few teaching that could mess you up. So you've got to be careful who you're listening to. Make sure they're sound and they're biblical. Ask about them. Pastor, is that a good person to listen to? Is that a good resource? Is that a good church? Right? And uh, and that would be wonderful if you can do that. Uh, Please don't just just open yourself just to anything, anyone. Because there's a lot of crazies out there. There's a lot of confused people out there as well. A lot of false teaching out there. So please um, ask about that. Uh, After some time of being here among the church family and being on this path, I have felt a sense of peace, calmness, and steadiness. Amen. May you continue to feel that, uh, Jess, as you are part of this family, being encouraged and loved. And we find ourselves, we, we, it's beautiful to, to, to let God love us through people and, uh, yeah. What I was looking for isn't in this world. It's beyond. It's true. What you're looking for is not in this world. The peace that the perfect peace is in Christ. (laughs) The joy that we need is in the Lord. The security we need is in the Lord. The worth is in the Lord. The world promises so much and gives us so little. This is not to say that I'm not ever tempted anymore, but I know the path Jesus wants me to follow, which is to walk according to his word. Amen to that. And his love and his holiness. And God knows the best for me. And he commands us to surrender our worries to him and trust him completely. So once I surrendered all my worries, again, the word surrender, surrendered all my worries and anxieties about people, about future, I saw immediately changes and outcomes. Are you worried about people, what they think of you? Are you worried about the future? Surrender. Surrender the future. Surrender tomorrow, otherwise you will be a slave. Surrender what worries you, otherwise it will bind you. God was and keeps on guiding me in so many ways, 
and especially through his word, his spirit, and other believers. Friends, guidance comes through the word of God, uh, through the spirit of God living in you as a believer, and through other believers. So seek that if you need directions. I'm so glad that I trusted my life to Jesus who has been working in me to soften my heart and lead me to surrender to him. You know what God is doing in some of you who've got hard hearts? He's trying to soften it. Don't harden your heart. Let him soften your heart. God wants a soft heart. And I know life can harden us. Challenges can harden us. Disappointments, rejection. Life is tough and it hardens. But we need to keep our heart soft through his word and spirit and let him keep on chiseling away the hardness. Let us be soft to God. She says, I'm so glad I trusted my life to Jesus. There is a gladness that comes from trusting Jesus. I have experienced his healing. The anxious thoughts suddenly disappeared and my panic attacks rarely occur. He alone can truly heal. Amen and amen. I used to ask myself, since when do I not want to sin? That's a good question. As a young person, it's like you just go, bing, bing, bing. You're just everywhere. You speak stupid. You go places that are wrong. You you get into relationships that are not right. You All kinds of things. And then all of a sudden, Jesus gets your life and you go, hey, I didn't do that. I wasn't rude to my mom today. (laughs) I wasn't, you know, did that or went there. And that's what the Holy Spirit does when we come to him and surrender our life. Uh, It was even shocking to me. I just had the moment of realizing one day when I took a step back and compared myself and my thoughts to before and was just in awe at how I have been transformed. Our God is a transformer. Our God is a transformer. He never wants to keep you the same, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. Our God, when we give him our life, believe me, he wants to transform us. He is in the business of changing our, our, our desires, our hopes, our dreams, everything. He wants to take our heaviness and give us lightness. Take our sadness and give us joy. He wants to give us a pure mind, a a, a right thinking. He does want to transform the way we live and walk and talk. My focus, and this is what happened when he transformed us. She says, my focus has shifted. Matters of the world such as fame, money, and externals, they stop being objects of my desire. It's not easy for a young person like you, Jesse, to say that, right? Because that's what we want when we're young and even when we're old, right? Uh, Fame, money, looking good, dressing well, make sure everybody sees me and it's all about me, 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 me. And uh, praise God that my focus shifted. I love that word. Our focus needs to be shifted off ourselves and about ourselves. And it needs to be put on Christ. When your eyes are focused on him, when your heart is focused on him, when your desires are on him, believe you me, he takes care of you. What does he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Put your eyes on me. Shift your, put your focus on me. And I'll take care of your insecurities. I take care of your needs. A lot of young people have got their eyes and their hearts and their lives on the things that are going to disappoint them and break their hearts. Stop being the object of my desire. That's wonderful. They no longer controlled me or had the power over me. I know that this process is one that will never end in a lifetime. I pray and hope that I will only keep growing in my faith and in Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Praise God for that testimony. What a beautiful lessons there. I don't know some of you, but there are many lessons that be encouraged what God has done in her and he wants to do in all of us. And so um, let that speak to you today. The other, um, the other uh, testimony I want to read today is, is Rami. So uh, Rami says, before I followed Jesus Christ as my Lord, I never read the Bible when I was young. I wasn't taught at school uh, by anyone uh, how important the Bible is in one's life. 
Very, very important, guys. The word of God. I was thinking about that. How important that we expose our kids, our grandchildren. You who are grandparents, you have an amazing opportunity to get your grandkids to say, Hey, what do you think of that story of Jesus? What do you think of this? Get the word of God in them. Sow the word of God in them because the world is sowing their poison, their ideas, their horrible ways. As a young people, get yourself soaked in the word of God, otherwise you're going to be soaked in the world. You're going to be influenced by the world. You're going to have desires of the world. Expose yourself to the word of God. Shower yourself with the word of God. Fill yourself with the word of God. <clears throat> May God help us to teach. We're thankful to the kids church. Um, uh, to, to those who teach in, in, in the kids church. You're, 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 you're investing in these kids, in their minds, in their hearts, the word of God. Sow the word of God in their hearts. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. When they're old, they will not depart. One day they will return if you've sown the word of God in them. I thought Christianity was a list of chores to do, attending church on Christmas and Easter, memorizing some prayers, acting nice, and voila, you're a Christian. At least this is what I thought. To this day, friends, there are people that think by attending church you become a Christian or by praying some prayers or by doing some nice things. And we know that as a people here in Christ the King, we don't become a Christian because we're born in a Christian family. Uh, Even if you're evangelical and you've become an evangelical church, you don't become a Christian automatically because you are born in that family. You don't become a Christian. Even if you come into church every Sunday and go every Bible study, you become a Christian when you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ for yourself. Please keep that in mind. And as you talk to others, make sure that you share that. I never thought of it as a two-way relationship between me and God. It is a two-way relationship. Do you have a two-way relationship with God? Do you talk with Him? Do you allow Him to talk to you through His Word? Friends, that's what true following of Jesus is. It's a relationship, not a religion. Not the Sunday thing. Not the odd, thank you God, help me God. I need you God. Even though that's fine, God, it, God can handle all that. But is that what your Christianity is all about? Or are you surrendered to him, you talk to him, you walk with him, you include him in your life? It's a relationship. Remember Jesus said, I never knew you when I spoke on Sunday. It means I don't have a relationship with you. And when he doesn't know you and you don't know him, he will say, depart from me. Um, then he goes on to say, all I cared about was where to eat, drink, and how to pass my time. Remind me of the, the verse that says, let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we will die. And so Rami says, that's all I was interested in. Where to eat, where to go, where to pass my time. And is that what life is all about, friends? As followers of Jesus, that all changes. It becomes about Father, it's about living life with him and going where he wants us and um, investing in other people's lives and praying for people and caring for people and touching our family, our daughters, our sons, our grandchildren, our friends. It's about living life as a follower of Jesus by inviting people into the light that we have in Jesus and impacting others, living for a purpose other than where to eat and where to go. Go and eat and enjoy. We all do that, right? It's wonderful, thank God. But if that's all we live for, what a sad life. God has given us a purpose, given us a life. How did you make that commitment? Rami says, at the age of 27, when I met my wife, Rita, who was with me in college, um, it was she who told me that she attended a prayer group and that, Maybe I should join her sometimes. Isn't that great? When a wife or a partner or a friend that you're going out with says, Hey, why don't we go to Bible study? Why don't you go with me to the church? Do you know who invited Peter to meet Jesus? Andrew, his brother. 
Andrew invited Peter. Will you be an Andrew? Will you be a Rita? Will you be what we'll hear about Alexi who invited his sister and father and others? Would you be that type of person that invites others? So important. You might not be a great preacher. You might not be able to share the gospel very well. But can you not ring someone and say, listen, I'm going to church this Sunday. Will you come with me? And then after we'll go and have lunch together. You don't know what God can do. Last Sunday, many of you who were baptized, you tried to invite your friends and family. And some of you, many of you came. It was wonderful to see Rami's, let's say Rami's uh, brother and sister-in-law and, and Talin's friends and others who came. They were like this, le- le- hearing the word of God or the testimonies. They were touched by God. And they, and they said to them, wow, what a church. What a pastor. No. Um, They were so touched by the word of God. They were impacted. But because somebody invited them. Guys, let's invite others. Let's invite them. Let's love them. Let's in, we want them to know Jesus. What they do, it's up to them. We can't force anyone. But we can what? We can invite. And God bless you, Rita, for inviting Rami to that prayer meeting. That was the first time I read my Bible. And to be quite honest, I could not stop reading since then. Wow. Can you imagine we're able to put the Bible in someone's hand or help them to read or read it with them. Help them to read the word of God. It's amazing. It's powerful. A few years later, I began to to feel that something was missing. It was like a piece of the puzzle wasn't fitting. So I started diving deeper into reading my Bible. And I wanted more of God than just reciting some prayers and repeating others a few dozens of times, thinking that I will be heard for my many prayers. So when he read the Bible, it was like a piece of the puzzle was fitting together. The Bible answers many of our questions. Many of the things we're not knowing, not understanding as we read and ask others to help us it really does help us to make sense of life otherwise nothing makes sense of life it's like and then he goes on to say um, then i started church hunting um, and even though i lived here in the area all of my life i never noticed ctk until the day I decided to look for a church. Thank God he went on Google. Thank God for Google. Right? I know you don't, not everybody likes Google. But you know, Google can be nice sometimes. <laughs> um, those who have helped us in our website, Dana and others, and uh, Jesse, and uh, we're thankful. Uh, from the very beginning, I told the people of our church, we need to have a good website, good Facebook, because a lot of people are searching They no longer see signs and go around. They look on social media and they put English church and our church comes up and God sometimes leads people to here. We've had so many people come because of that. So I want to encourage those of you to keep investing uh, in our social media. God is using you and using it to bring people to our church, to our family, to Jesus Christ above all. And so I want to encourage you to keep serving. If you're good in those areas, come and serve. Come and join uh, and be, be a blessing. Uh, what changed uh, in you since you committed your life? Uh, he says this, ever since coming to church, meeting with, with up with Pastor Miled and joining the Bible study, my relationship with God has truly grown. And of course, I have my ups and downs. Again, coming to church, bringing people is so important. Meeting the pastor, meeting leadership, meeting people here. You're an encouragement. I know sometimes you think, if I come to church or I don't come to church, it doesn't make a difference. Can I tell you, it makes a difference. Your presence makes a difference. Just put a smile on your face. Say hello to someone. You know, go up to somebody, encourage somebody, and you make a difference. Be a blessing and you'll be blessed. My relationship with God has truly grown. And of course, I have my ups and downs. But the most important thing 
is that after every fall, I rise up and keep my eyes on Jesus, the prize ahead. Isn't that beautiful? Friends, you may fall. Get up in Jesus' name and keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep getting up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't let the enemy say, you're hopeless. You're always doing it. You're this, you're that. Say, yet I might be hopeless, but I am hopeful. I believe in the one who resurrects, who heals, who restores, who delivers, who loves me, who's accepted me. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep fighting, like Paul says. Keep fighting the fight till you get there. Be a fighter. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the prize ahead. I keep on submitting to the Lord and fighting the battles with his word and the help of his Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Keep submitting to the Lord. Keep fighting the battles with his word and his Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Let's pray. Come and come up, team, and uh, I'll obey you. <laughs> let's pray. Firstly, let's, uh, we'll continue some of the others uh, next week, God willing. Um, Sometimes you don't know how long things will take, but uh, praise God. Thank you, Father, for these two testimonies uh, of Jesse and Rami. Thank you for the powerful lessons that are in there. You have spoken to us through your uh, work, through your Holy Spirit, through the way you change people, through the way you speak to people, through the way you draw people. Thank you. Thank you so much for the way you've worked in Jesse's life and you've worked in Rami's life. And we know the journey is is going to be tough, but we pray for them that your spirit will keep empowering them, keep strengthening them, keep changing them, keep their eyes on you, Lord, keep fighting, keep surrendering, keep submitting. And for us too, Lord, help us to do the same. Help us, Lord, about these things that we heard today. Help us to to let you do them in our life. Help us to invite people. Help us to deposit your word in our lives and in others. Help us to, to do what we heard. Oh, God, please remind us of the lessons today that we heard. And uh, allow us to be those who are transformed. Please transform me. Please change me. Continue to change me, Lord. I need to be transformed. Transform us, Lord. We surrender, Lord. I surrender, Lord, to you today afresh. Please take more areas of my life that I haven't surrendered to you and be King, be Lord, and transform us. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.